Hello, Algebra 1 students, and welcome to your first video of many throughout the school year. Topic 1, Solving Equations and Inequalities, Section 1 to Solving Linear Equations. So you're going to uh, notice that in this section, a lot of this stuff you have learned in 7th and 8th grade. I know for a fact through tutoring some students. So let's talk about how we solve linear equations, right? So when we see this word solve, that word solve means isolate the variable. So I'm going to put some notes on here, so please do the same. So the word solve equals isolate the variable. The variable. And typically our variable is going to be x. Okay. So we're looking for the value of x. Okay. And in order to solve a linear equation, there are typically three steps you're going to follow. Okay, uh, the first step here is if you see parentheses, you're going to do something called distribution, distribute. So typically when you distribute, you see a number or something in front of a parenthesis, and you're going to distribute that into the parenthesis. Remember that when you distribute, you are multiplying. So this is just multiplication. The second thing you do when you're trying to solve an equation is you look to combine your like terms. We call it CLT. Combine your like terms. And what we're talking about is looking at the left side and the right side only. And seeing if there's any like terms on the left side we can combine and any like terms on the right side we can combine. And then the third step I'm going to squeeze in here. We're going to use what are called inverse operation, inverse ops. So uh, you should know the four basic operations are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So you should know that addition and subtraction are inverse operations. They undo each other, as well as multiplication and division. They are inverses. They undo each other, right? So we're going to use these to then move across the equal sign and solve for our variable. All right, so let's get right to it. So our first example here is to solve each equation, and then we're going to check our answer. So we're going to solve the equation and then check our answer. So if I look at this, the first thing I'm looking for is parentheses, and I see no parentheses. So that means we're not going to distribute. So no distribution here. So next, I'm going to draw this line down the equal sign. Creates my left side and my right side. And if you look, I see a negative 4x and a 3x on the left side. The fact that I said x twice should, uh, should ring a bell or whatever in your head that, oh, these might be like terms. So we are going to have some like terms to combine. So combine like terms. On the right-hand side, there's only a 2. That's a single term. We can't combine that. So we can combine like terms on the left-hand side of this equation. So we are going to combine the negative 4x and the positive 3x. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. And the x just comes along. So we have essentially uh, uh, combined those like terms. Um, when you have a number in front of a variable, right, like that number x, so this number is called a coefficient. So just doing some vocab real fast. So it's called a coefficient. And when you have a coefficient in front of a variable, that operation is multiplication. So be aware of that, that that number in front of the x is multiplying. So in a sense, we just combined the coefficients and left the x alone. I'm going to bring down the 2. And now, once you combine your like terms, right, our goal is to get x by itself. We want x equals a number to be our final answer because the x is on the left-hand side. So to do this, we're going to do an addition or a subtraction first, potentially, and then we're going to multiply or divide second. Now, if I look here, right, the only thing I have on this left-hand side with the x is a negative 1. Again, as I just talked about, this negative 1 is multiplying with the x. So we are not going to have to add or subtract anything. We're going to go straight to the second idea, multiplication and division. And because this negative 1 is multiplying, we are going to undo it by dividing by that negative 1 on both sides. Notice that I do divide by the negative. 
your rules when it comes to multiplication and positive and negatives is that two negatives cancel and become positive, and that's what I want to happen. So if these negative ones will cancel, your x comes down, and you just take 2 divided by negative 1. And 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. And your answer here is x equals negative 2. So now, we're going to check that. I'm going to do the check right over here. So in order to check this answer, we are simply going to plug negative 2 back in to the two x's here and here. And when we do that, we're going to put parentheses around the negative 2. So you'll see right over here. So negative 4, parentheses negative 2, that means times, plus 3, times negative 2, and this should come out to be 2. So we're looking for the left side and the right side to be equal. If they are equal, that means that our solution works. So I'm going to simplify negative 4 times negative 2, that's positive 8. I'm going to simplify positive 3 times negative 2, and that's negative 6. And now I'll just combine 8 minus 6, and 8 minus 6 is 2, and that does equal 2, and we're good to go. So this is our answer. Okay, let's do a couple more of these. Next example here. All right, so same thing we're going to solve. We'll check our answer as well. So we have 7 equals 5y minus 13 minus y. So again, I see no parentheses, so there's no distribution. So now I'm going to draw my line down the equal side. Eventually, as we go through this class, hopefully we stop drawing the line. But again, it's important to know, uh, you know when we move things to do it on both sides. Okay, so here's the left side. Here's the right side. I do see some like terms on the right side. I see a 5y, and this negative y can be thought of as a negative 1y. So we are going to combine like terms, but this time, this time it's on the right-hand side. So my 7 comes down on the left. On the right-hand side, 5 minus 1 is 4y, and the minus 13 comes down. So now, our goal, since the y is on the right-hand side, our goal is to get that y by itself, so our final answer will look like this. Some number equals y. Right? It doesn't matter if the y is first or last. Okay. So to do this, again, two steps. Right. The first step, we're going to use an addition or a subtraction. And then the second step, we're going to use a multiplication or a division, right? Now, in this problem, I do see this minus 13. It's not attached to the y, so that is a subtraction, minus 13. To undo that subtraction, we're going to add. And if I do it on the right-hand side, I have to do it on the left-hand side. So again, this bar, this line down the equal sign, separates the left and right-hand side. So I typically draw a line, and I do my simplification left to right. So 7 plus 13 is 20. The 4y comes down, and negative 13 and positive 13 cancel. And now, this 4y is multiplying together, 4 and y. So to undo multiplication, we divide by 4, divide by 4. I get 5 on this side. That's going to equal the 4's cancel, y. And my value for y is 5. I'm going to check right here by plugging in this 5 in for this y. And right here, I'm just going to put it in that spot. Right, I don't need to use parentheses because there's, there's a minus in front of it, but that I'm just going to put the 5 there. So you're going to see it's going to say 7 equals 5, parentheses, 5, minus 13, minus 5. If that 5 was a negative number, I would put it in parentheses, but the parentheses don't really matter. Okay? So I'm going to simplify 5 times 5 is 25, minus 13, minus 5. So we do five, 25 minus 13 is 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. And 7 does equal 7. So we did verify that this 5 is our value of y. Okay, last one of these type. So here we go. 7m minus 4 minus 9m minus 36 equals 0. So again, we always freak out when we see equals 0, but it's not a big deal, right? 0 is a number, just like any old number. It has some special properties which sometimes makes the problem easier. But again, don't be freaked out. Be ready to confront. OK, so first thing I see is no parentheses. So there's no distribution, right? So here's my line. So obviously, my left-hand side is much more busy than my right-hand side, right? So I'm going to combine like terms on my left-hand side. Now, you'll see that I have two m terms. I have a positive 7m and a negative 9m. 7 minus 9 is negative 2m. I also have two numbers that are by themselves. We call these numbers constants. 
So this negative 4, negative 36, because they don't have variables, they're called constants. So I'm going to write that word up here, constants. So negative 36, negative 4. So sometimes you'll say, let's combine the constant terms, or let's combine the constants here. So negative 4, negative 36 gets more negative, so that's going to be negative 40. And then I'll bring down my 0. So now my variables on the left-hand side, so my goal is to get this to say m equals some sort of a number. So again, the first thing you do is an addition or a subtraction. The second thing you do is a multiplication or a division. In this case, the minus 40 has no m next to it, so let's get rid of it. It is subtracting, so let's add. Add 40 there, add 40 there. Uh, left to right, the negative 2m comes down, the 40s cancel, 0 plus 40 is 40. And then this negative 2m is multiplying together, negative 2 times m. To undo multiplication, we divide by negative 2 on the left and on the right. The negative 2s cancel, m is all by itself, and 40 divided by negative 2 is negative 20. And we will, we'll skip the check answer for this one, so you can cross that part off. All right, great. So first video is down. I got a second video coming up doing a couple more uh, solving equations.